Welcome to Vision Plus, a program featuring a positive outlook, dealing with everyday situations of marriage, children, and business. Believing Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Teacher, author, speaker, delighting audiences from New York to Sacramento with a heart and message for the people today. Bonnie would like to remind you of the 800 number on the screen. Please feel free to call at any time throughout the broadcast and share your concerns. Leave your prayer request and someone will pray with you. And now, teacher, author, and speaker. <laughs> and, uh, we're going to talk tonight about our legacy. Uh, and the legacy is our birthright our inheritance, our gift. And if you will, uh, several of the verses in the Bible, if you'll get out your uh, Bible, if you have a Bible with you, turn to Deuteronomy 4 and 10. We will go through that in just a minute. But first of all, I want to talk about, I know there's a few people here that I love the Tennessee game. So if you will stand up and show Tennessee. Here's our Tennessee balls to a volunteer right there. And a few others. Give her a hand. Give her a hand. Uh, we allow Tennessee people to be right here in Alabama. So, uh, and uh, I want you to think about the hats we wear in life. Sometimes we love Tennessee. I went to a church in Alabama one time, and the man was from Auburn. And this few years, all half a dozen years ago, and my brother played for the Razorbacks in Arkansas. So the that day, that particular night before, Saturday before, Arkansas actually beat Auburn. I know that's a rare thing, but it did happen. So the preacher wouldn't come up on the stage, and the song leader was just leading it. Started several songs we didn't even know he was going to start. Finally, the song leader said, Are you going to come up and preach? He said, No, I'm back here recruiting for Auburn to get some new ball players. <laughs> <laughs> we in Alabama and the South know that it's really, we love the, the games. How many of you had someone that went to Auburn? We'll go ahead and find out. How about how many of you had someone went to Alabama? Okay, there's some more. What about Dave Lipscomb? All right. And what, 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 I heard that. <laughs> what about, did anybody have any relatives go to Breed Hardiman? Oh, there you go. See, there's some of them. My cousin uh, was the president of Breed Hardiman, and I know I have his book around here somewhere. Lee Claude Gardner, he was the president for 20 years, and he was there for many more years. What we're going to do tonight is talk about the fact that even though we all wear a lot of hats in life, she might wear that one, this is one. Now, for me, I used to pick cotton in Arkansas, and this kind of hat I, bonnet I wore when I picked cotton. So how many of you have ever picked cotton or chopped cotton or had lived on a farm or knew anybody that did? I really did like that job and too much, but I was good at it because I had four brothers and I had to beat them because I was the only girl of all five of us. And so uh, we wear a lot of hats in life, don't we? How many of you have a mother, had a mother? I did. Had any siblings? She had a twin, identical twin sibling, and I asked her how her husband know which one to marry. And if they identical twins, they could have switched out. And she had a date with him one night, and the other twin sister, identical twin, have one. How many of you have daughters or sons? Or dogs, or cats. <laughs> Our little, I heard about your dog that got, uh, that got sick. Ours got into some poison. I guess that's what it was from the neighbors. I never really knew. So we took our little, our favorite babysitter my children had was named Linda. 
So they named the dog Linda. Not really the most uh, name you would normally name, but it, to them that was a really special name. So one day when the dog got sick, we took her to the veterinary. And I was explaining to my daughter, she was just a little tiny one, and I said, the veterinarian is an animal doctor. She was totally quiet, didn't say another word. She watched that doctor take care of her little puppy on the way home. She said, that animal doctor looked just like a man. <laughs> 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 Have you ever had a challenge with your words that you say? They don't always communicate exactly what you were thinking they should wear, or they should say. Now, my husband worked. He's the director of engineering at Scores Industry. They just asked him to come back just recently. And he's a, he's a Penn State graduate. We don't hold that against him, especially when uh, he got whomped the other day mm -hmm. by one of our Alabama team. And uh, we were, uh, I go a lot of places to a lot of nursing homes. Now, I always try to take everybody some little gift. And they love bright, colorful things. So if you ever go to the nursing home, how many of you remember Barbara Friend? She's right over here, precious lady. She has me come over here and speak to her group a lot. But uh, we were in Alaska speaking just recently, and I like the Aurora Borealis. We took, how many of you have ever been to Alaska? Let's see, oh, you have, you've been there? Oh, and Tom has, Dr. Tom. Well, I get, we got on the train and we rode north and we stayed at a place in Wasilla Resort, they called it. And outside, the, the, there was ice. It was just in January. And the, we were at Lake Lucille and it was a truck, a Jeep, and several cars that were there on the ice. I said, Tony, look, they're driving those vehicles right on the ice. He said, I said, they stopped and they stayed there for hours. I said, what are they doing? He said, they're ice fishing. And that was so interesting that you read about it or even see it on television. But when you see it in person, you just can't believe it. That they do. And then we took the train and saw the moose. Now they said, somebody said, oh, there's, I just saw a bunch of moose. Somebody said, there's 16 moose out there. And they had a big uh, article, headline of paper, road, kill moose, somebody has to come help, and they take that meat and immediately give it to the children's homes. That's good meat, they, they use that meat, the moose meat. I don't know what else you call it, but moose meat. But anyway, that was, a, I thought, we will never see that in the Huntsville Times headline. <laughs> Road kill, moose, come and help us cut it up for the children's home. But, um, no, now, I know that George was born here in Alabama. Pratt right Alabama. here in Huntsville. Right here in Huntsville. How many of you were born in another state? I know Tony was. Look at that. I can't believe that. That's amazing. I would love to hear where each one of you are. If he hadn't cut me short and make me talk such short. See, I can work a, cut, a talk for three, three hours. Three hours. 30 minutes, three days. I gave each one of you take-home things because I didn't think I might get to everything, but I did want to tell you that we're going to be talking about the gift that God gives us. And I, the gift is our birthright or our legacy or our inheritance that we can pass on to other people. That we have been given that, that God uh, gives that to us. Now, I would like, Tony, if you would please, if you'll read that um, Deuteronomy 410 or a little bit of it anyway. And I wrote the most important things. It's on your piece of paper there. And Are you ahead. ready? Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm ready. 10, especially concerning the day you stood before the Lord your God in Horeb, when the Lord said to me, gather the people to me and I will let them hear my words. There it is. Hear my words. That they may learn to fear me all the days they live on the earth, and that they may teach their children. That's the thing, teaching our children. Now, our children, for Don and uh, Tom and Donna, we're all their children because we're in their world. And so our children, our grandchildren, 
all of these people that are in our world, as we, we cross in life, lives we touch, that, that is like our children, grandchildren, them that are far off. And it commands us, well, actually, it, it doesn't command us, it just says. And if you go on down and read uh, Deuteronomy 11, 19, come in, I don't know how fast you are, but we'll find out. He agreed that yes. he caught me. But, uh, no, actually, I had to pay the $5 because he was in the Marine Corps and he had no money, he said. When we got up there to get our license, I started leaving. I said, and that lady said, who's going to pay for this? I said, didn't he pay for it? He'd gotten it gone the day before. She said, no. She said, that'll be $5. Man, I'd lucky to have $5. <laughs> I, so Bonnie, I, I Bonnie, collected my $5. That was a test no. to Bonnie. see if you were serious. Uh, <laughs> I've been collecting my $5 every day. I had day. to do the same thing. You had to do the same thing. <laughs> okay. Okay, Tony. You, shall, you shall teach them to your children, speaking of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up. And you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. What I want you to do is write down your legacy. I want to encourage you to do that. Write down your life story. Think back. If you could go back five generations, four generations, three generations, what it was like to live in Greece and see what the world was like at that time and see what it was like when my great-grandfather, wouldn't it be great if we could read those stories? You are the only ones that can give that legacy, that gift, that inheritance, that birthright to your world, whoever your loved ones are. And you, you need it so you, every time you sell a house, you can say, here's a book. <laughs> and, and like, now, we wrote about our daughter. Our daughter was a Russian interpreter she took a million dollars to the former Soviet Union. That book looks real. But she got the book. But uh, I wrote about those stories about her when she'd write those stories about uh, what happened in Russia. And as she would take people, she, she learned in Dallas and in Christ the Nation of Dallas, there was a language school, and then here at uh, Huntsville, U.A. Huntsville, she learned Russian. And she would take people, if you want to go to Russia, she could go, she'd be your interpreter. And they did street ministry. And she learned a lot of song. So, absent from the body, present with the Lord. I miss her because she and I would go places. I'd speak and she'd sing. And I miss her, but I'm not sad that she's not here going through whatever our government's doing now. But uh, Tony and I had a lot of challenges. and. Uh, you know, we've had 20 years of wonderful married life. That's not real bad out of 53. <laughs> <laughs> you got that. Yeah. Uh, but, so we wrote a, a book about how the Lord put our marriage back together. And it has what's called analysis action section. And we do, especially for people that are thinking about getting married, relationships, we do workshops. It started out with uh, this, and then it's been updated, and then every time uh, we would have these analysis action sections written in with yellow, because most people's mother's daddy said don't write the books. And so, anyway, then it, then it got updated and transferred over. But what I want to encourage you to do, we did one, we were over speaking in seven islands, and we went to uh, Puerto Rico, and this was in front of a waterfall there. This is called Just Flow. And it's about how we can flow in our life with, you know, there's about 85% of things that Tony does that I kind of like about him. There's 15% that draws me up a wall. I would like to punch him for it. But I figure, okay, 85%, that's not really bad, so, I just have to forget the other 15%. So that's what I tell all these young people. I said, you don't need to get, get in a divorce. 
Do you want to do you want to know what my ratio is? I better not say. <laughs> <laughs> but let's say yeah, it's not easy. But what you need to learn is just flow. Now what you can do, you can get how many of you have access to a computer? Or you have some grandchild or some neighbor or some friend or that can get into the computer. You can use a tape recorder. They've got these little jaggy deals now. You can put them around your neck, turn them on, and tape whatever you want to in these tape recorders. And they can plug right into the computer and it will transfer it into words. And you've got a book. And it doesn't matter. See, just go to Kinko's and have a little thing for them. Bring it to church and your words then can be a book. And then if you're a kid, somebody loves you enough, or your neighbors, they can have that made into what I call a real book. But this is okay. I'd love to have this to my great-grandfather. Now, my, my grandparents did write, I better have that, let us make man. Well, that's the name of it. It's here somewhere. It fell off in the back. There's one this in it. Anyway, oh yeah, you can go to Walmart, get this kind if you want to, and tape it, tape it on there. It might be one of Yeah, one did fall down. And so then if you do it, one of my good friends wrote a book. We convinced, convinced him to, and he died right after that. Not that if you write a book, you're going to die right there. But the thing is, I'm watching your legs get back in the water. <coughs> Don't even read the next part. Oh. Okay, the oh. next the next one is oh, is uh, okay. influence. Yeah, go on. And it is going to be Psalm thirty four eleven. Okay, let's go to Psalm thirty four eleven. You read a little louder, Tony. Come you children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. And then right after that. We're going to go to Proverbs 4.4. 4, go ahead. And that is, He also taught me. He said to me, Let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Do not forget, nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her, and she will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get understanding. Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you to honor when you embrace her. She will place on your hand, head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. What I see is in influence is David invited his children. One of my, I've got a whole bunch of, a different um, per, uh, books, Bibles, and uh, he didn't command his children, he invited them. I like that word. He didn't demand that they obey God, but Solomon, of course, did. And following, go ahead, Tony, was still, I got allergy and it's coming up. So go ahead, Tony, read uh, uh, Follow, how we follow. But I want to include you. I encourage you that Solomon disclosed his father's, not the heavenly father, his daddy's words. He, he allowed them to be a part of him. And I think that's what the influence that George's mother had on him. Or else he'd be three God docs today. <laughs> okay, Tony, go ahead and read about forward. following. 716. And it is. Jesus answered, answered them and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his who sent me. If anyone wills to do his will, he shall know concerning the doctrine, whether it is from God or whether I speak of my own authority. He who speaks from himself seeks his own glory but he who seeks the glory of the one who sent him is true and the unrighteousness is in him did not moses give you the law yet none of you 
keeps the law. Why do you seek to kill me? Well, is that 716? Mm -hmm. That was oh, a little okay. past 16. Okay. Well, what I get, as you can see, I paraphrase a lot of these, but I say that Jesus asserted that God taught him on he was God. Jesus and God and the Holy Spirit, three and one. But he allowed God. Now, he did go to him, and he was very, you know, why did, when he was there praying and praying his grapes, drops of blood. Can you imagine that? Then he said, let this cup pass from me. But at the same time, even though he would say, why hast thou forsaken me? He still followed what his father, our God, his God, well, it was him also. Um, I'd like to talk about that someday, but that, he did it anyway. And sometimes, you might not have wanted to do what your mother said because your daddy was Greek and your mother was church Christ. You might have said, but my daddy says, blah, 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 blah. But he did it anyway. Might not always, how many of you have had times that you really didn't agree with what your parents or somebody in your life had to say? But you did it anyway. And a lot of our children sometimes and the people in our lives, Donna, just like the one under the bridge that you're influencing. If you had a book to hand to them, and I know Donna writes beautifully. She, I've done some of her plays. We had a wonderful time over there at your house after you got back from, oh, I loved it. I was glad it was after you got back from England because you gave, she served on these plates that had all of the, well, the royals. I took mine home. I wouldn't eat off of it. I took it home. I ate on the napkin and took my plate home. I've got it in my kitchen right now. <laughs> I thought it was beautiful. Remind me of when we were in London. But another thing about God, the gift from the parents and the teachers and the influence that David had on his children and how Jesus followed God's teaching. One thing about Jesus that I love is that he was so transparent. If he said, why have you forsaken me? That, see, he could have covered that part up and not told us that, that he had this desire to, why do I have to go to the cross? And when he uh, just cried out on the, uh, Gethsemane and said, uh, please let this, let this, I want to go through this. Can't you understand why have you forsaken me? But he did it anyway. We need to be transparent. <coughs> Tony, if you'll help me with some of these examples. I like drink. <coughs> I'm a drinking woman, I guess. Did you like a cough drop? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what I need. Well, Give us some examples. <coughs> um. Well, I can tell you about you, or I can tell you about me. I better, better but you, about the ones you. you wrote here are about you. Uh, Bonnie's parents lived the teaching of the Bible, and I knew them for quite a number of years, and that's true, they sure did. Uh, they were married 60 years. My parents were married over 50 years. Wonderful. And Bonnie's mother had the chance with an ASU Arkansas State University scholarship and when she asked her Bonnie's dad said well I got the scholarship the kids have all gone through school and high school and I have the scholarship and he said well who's gonna drive you because she did not drive a car she used to drive a Model T when she was younger but when she got a little bit older she didn't drive anymore so she said that just something died in her and she just gave up to it and she stayed on the farm and worked the farm with him. But they did stay married for 60 years. Um, and then <clears throat> she had uh, her three older brothers were in the military services Second World during the Second World War and Churchill talked Roosevelt into 
letting him send over about 400,000 German and Italian prisoners of war. And they were housed here in various small cities throughout the, mostly the eastern United States. And well, so. her dad didn't have but one little son younger yet than Bonnie, and Bonnie was only about five or six, so your brother would have been about three or four, and he had nobody to help him on the farm. I mean, all the boys at one, about at one time left. So he went and hired some of the German prisoners. You'd hire them very inexpensively, and I guess it was about, what, 15 of them at a time would come over. They would work the farm for him, and her parents, raised sweet potatoes as well as the cotton and soybeans. They would have a meal, they'd set up like a door off of the barn on some sawhorses, and she would prepare these sweet potatoes, cook them, and have them there for them. Her grandmother churned butter to put really good healthy butter on them. The German prisoners loved to come to the Taylor farm to work because they were fed good. Like it, she would make any amount of sweet potatoes they wanted. They could eat till they were stuffed. But her dad then would learn, well, he knew Greek. He taught himself Greek and Hebrew. And he also then very quickly taught himself some German. And he would teach them the Bible. They could eat, but while they were eating, they had to hear the Bible. Some of them became Christians because of that. So you just never know what your story and, and what you're doing, what real influence is it? And here he is in broken German talking to these guys that could hardly speak any broken English at all, but nevertheless he communicated to them. He probably did it a lot with kindness, and it worked in a lot of, a lot of areas. A lot of them did become Christians before they left there. And once they were repatriated back to the Germany or their home country, they had to go. They couldn't stay. But many came back as professors and became professors and teachers and engineers and Christian. And it was a lot of it was because of the way they were treated by the people in the United States. So you never know what influence you will have and what legacy you're going to leave. You can't even, I just remember my dad preaching one time and he said, when he got back to LK, who was there? And he said, well, it's just not much went on there, an old country church. He said, this one old preacher and his wife were baptized. But they had seven sons, and every son became a preacher. So you never know what God can do with your life. Because you know, each of you, each of us, has been placed here on earth and given life for some grand purpose. Each of us was given this gift. It was put in us to develop and through its development to bless other people. That is our ordained purpose that God gave us. And your purpose can be accomplished only by you. Doesn't matter what hair or hat you wear in life or the monkeys on your back, but I'm going to ask you now.